All right, welcome back. Um, we are getting closer to the end of this uh, example. Um, in this video, we're actually going to look back at our three equations for solving stiffness method. And those equations are, uh, number one is your unrestrained deformations. Your unrestrained deformations. That's equal to your S sub UU inverse matrix times your joint load unrestrained matrix okay and your second equation is um, restrained reactions or R sub R is equal to your S sub R U matrix um, times your unrestrained de deformations uh, minus your joint load restrained and then finally your third equation is your M or I guess moment or member matrix is equal to uh, K sub 1 I'm sorry K sub I uh, times delta I plus your FM matrix or column vector I right so the very first thing we want to do is figure out what our deformations for our unrestrained degrees of freedom are. And what that means is that if we look back at this uh, degree of freedom diagram, what are the deformationing, deformations happening at the unrestrained degrees of freedom? So here we have one, two, and three unrestrained degrees of freedom, and they're all rotational ones. So in other words, what are the rotational deformations happening at one, two, and three? And if this will ever scroll down, the way we do this is stop scrolling, stop scrolling. Okay, the way we do this is um, we have our delta u is equal to your S sub uu inverse matrix. And remember, our S sub uu matrix. Um, was, where was it, right here. Your S sub UU matrix was this matrix right here. So, um, S sub UU, actually, let me write this matrix right here. Let me box that in, I guess yellow, yellow is good. This matrix right here is your S sub UU matrix, okay? And your S sub UU matrix um, if we took this matrix and we inverted it, so we found S sub U U inverse, our values, S, oops, um, S sub U U inverse would be the values obtained or the values shown here. So our S sub U U would be 1 over E I right because our s sub u u matrix was e times s sub u u and we took the inverse it's 1 over e i the values here would be 39 over 14 negative 3 fourths 3 over 14 our second row was negative 3 over 4 21 over 8 negative 3 over 4 uh, and then this one would be 3 over 14, uh, negative 3 fourths, negative 3 fourths, oops, negative 3 fourths, and then finally 39 over 14. That's our S sub UU inverse. And we also need to multiply this uh, by our joint load unrestrained matrix or our column vector. And remember, we figured out what that was. It was this matrix right here, this 96, 0, negative 96. So down here, I'm going to put 96, 0, negative 96. And if we do our um, matrix uh, multiplication here, right, column or row times column plus row times column plus row times column, um, we're going to get 17. 28 over 7, 0, 
and negative 1728 over 7. These are the deformations happening at the unrestrained degrees of freedom. All of this is over EI, right? These are the deformations happening at the unrestrained degrees of freedoms. In other words, these are the deformations happening at degree of freedom number 1, 2, and 3. So for 1, we have 1728 over 7 divided by EI. And for number 2, we have 0. And for 3, we have negative 1728 over 7 over EI. Uh, the negative means uh, this is just going the other way, right? So theta b or theta 3 was going clockwise here, or I'm sorry, counterclockwise here, and now it's going, it's actually going clockwise. So if I were to draw that, um, you know that angular deformations are in radians. And so you have 1728 over 7 times ei, right? That's theta 1. That's, that's the deformation happening at theta 1. So uh, that means this joint here is going to rotate counterclockwise. So our slope here is going to look something like that. Theta 2 was 0. The slope is going to look something like this. And theta 3 was going the opposite direction of this. That means the slope is going to look something like that. Right? So those are the unrestrained deformations happening at degrees of freedoms uh, 1, 2, and 3. So that's equation 1. This is how we use equation 1. That's We need our joint load unrestrained column vector and our S of UU inverse matrix. All right. Um, in the next video, we're going to look at our restrained reactions and how to figure out uh, what the values are for the restrained reactions. All right. So see you then.